Episode 56 YXA October 14th, 2024. New York City wood fired pizza joint makes life to Kinsia. In episode 56 YXA 1 United States 2 California but 3 Maine 4 New York City 5 Pennsylvania 6 United Kingdom 7 China. Main content. 1 United States. You could get $4,000 for a new breaker box courtesy of the US government. The cool down. Making energy efficient upgrades is one of the best ways to slash your home energy costs. For instance a heat pump can save you up to $1,000 a year. You could get $4,000 for a new breaker box courtesy of the US government. The cool down. Qualified renters are eligible too and may be especially interested in rebates for portable appliances like window unit heat pumps and induction. MSN. For instance, you could qualify for up to $8,000 for a new heat pump HVAC unit, $840 for a heat pump clothes dryer, and $4,000 for a breaker box. The government will pay you $2,000 to replace your water heater. Here's what you need to know. Heat pump water heaters can be up to three times more energy efficient than conventional water heaters. MSN. I save thousands. A DIY heat and AC system with heat pump. Heat pumps plus renewable energy. The perfect pairing for a better future clean technica. Heat pumps are magical machines that move heat from one place to another, and in doing so use electricity so efficiently that we'll be able to convert. Company unveils solar roof tiles capable of powering heat, pumps the cool down. Paxos just unveiled a solar tile that can connect to a heat pump on a house powering the system to help keep your home at a reasonable, better together. Modern building services. To date together housing has switched hundreds of homes from gas boilers to Panasonic J-Series Aquaria monoblock air to water heat pumps. To California. New York Times. California tries, Trump proofing, its climate policies. A second Trump administration would be expected to shred climate polices. California officials are devising ways to insulate its environmental regulations. Donald Trump is likely to try to blow up the state's climate policies which have set the pace for the rest of the nation and the world. Excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity and relationship to residents against wood smoke emission particulates, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. October 12, 2024. California officials have been working for months on a plan to Trump-proof the state's leading-edge environmental and climate policies in the event that former President Donald J. Trump returns to White House and follows through on his promise to gut them. Whether California succeeds could affect more than a dozen other states that follow its emissions rules and could have global impact because the state's market muscle compels automakers and other companies to conform to California standards. The strategy now being crafted in Sacramento includes lawsuits designed to reach wide-ranging settlements with industries that generate greenhouse gases and new rules and laws that rely on state authority and would be beyond the reach of the administration. California is requiring 75% of new trucks sold there after 2035 to be zero emissions. And in a request that is pending, California wants permission from the Biden administration to enact one of the most ambitious climate rules of any nation, a ban on the sale of new gas-powered passenger vehicles in the state after 2035. Both rules are tougher than federal policy and could have influence beyond the United States given California's standing as the world's fifth largest economy. The Democratic-controlled California state legislature has also passed a first-in-the-nation law requiring major companies to disclose their greenhouse emissions. And California has strengthened the authority of local governments to shut down oil and gas projects in their communities. Next month, Californians will be asked to approve a ballot measure to create a $10 billion climate bond to pay for climate and environmental projects. Under a provision of the 1970 Clean Air Act, the Environmental Protection Agency EPA has for decades given California a waiver that allows it to enact pollution controls that are stricter than federal regulations. Federal law also allows other states under certain circumstances to adopt California's standards as their own. 16 states have pledged to follow the California car rule and 10 states have adopted the truck rule meaning that the California regulations would apply to about 40% the United States auto market. Mr. Trump has promised to revoke the waiver. At the same time, the legality of the waiver is being challenged by 17 Republican attorneys general and several oil groups in a lawsuit that may head to the United States Supreme Court. California has partnerships with private companies such as automakers and agreements with other countries everywhere from China to Norway to Canada to combat the climate crisis together. Besides California Governor Gavin Newsom, other top Democrats in the state, including Attorney General Rob Bonta, are working with the state's climate regulator, the California Air Resources Board, on the Trump proofing strategy. Assembly Speaker Robert Rivas said the state legislature will be ready to meet in a special session after the November election if necessary. As the 2017 to 2021 Trump administration dismantled Obama era environmental rules and then took aim at California's policies, the state fought back. California filed more than 70 climate and environmental lawsuits against the Trump administration, prevailing in more than half of them. That kind of record is not assured in the future in part because Mr. Trump reshaped the nation's courts appointing more than 200 federal judges. Those appointments include three Supreme Court justices who helped form a conservative supermajority that delivered decisions to restrict the government's authority to regulate climate air and water pollution. As soon as January, the court could hear the case that is challenging California's waiver under the Clean Air Act. Gavin Newsom wants to export California's climate laws to the world. October 23, 2023. State officials and lawmakers are working to try to protect California's policies even if it loses its waiver. October 13, 2024. They plan to build upon their most successful legal gambit during Mr. Trump's first term. In 2019, the Trump administration revoked California's waiver the first time the federal government had done so since the Clean Air Act was passed in 1970. The Biden administration would later restore it, but the lapse had limited impact because California had secretly struck legal agreements with four of the world's largest automakers, Ford, Volkswagen, Honda, and BMW, to reduce their tailpipe emissions according to limits set by the state. California is requiring most new heavy-duty trucks sold there after 2045 to be zero emissions. But the deal with automakers, which expires in 2026, endured and grew. Volvo and Stellantis have since signed on. California regulators are now talking to the companies about even stricter emissions limits and expanding the agreement to include other automakers and possibly other states. We are going to fight back hard, said Phil Weiser, the Democratic Attorney General of Colorado.
Back-channel conversations are happening about ways to forge legal agreements to reduce emissions from other industries, including electric utilities, oil companies, and global corporations that have business in California. The state is betting that companies would prefer to enter into a legal agreement that requires them to cut emissions or pay for environmental remediation rather than gamble on a court decision that could result in much higher sums. Many companies would also like to avoid the uncertainty of federal rules that change with each administration. When you have a settlement with private industry, it doesn't matter if there is a change in administration, said a professor of political science who is familiar with California's strategy. The $206 billion settlement reached in 1998 between 46 states and tobacco companies offered lessons for how a climate deal between several states and industries could be structured. The California Attorney General's office hopes to create a foundation for such deals following its lawsuit last year accusing five of the world's largest oil companies of knowingly contributing to climate damage. The discovery documents and financial disclosures emerging from those complaints could lead to settlements under which companies might agree to emissions reductions. Legal settlements would likely be just one part of the state's Trump proofing. California has lots of other tools, including the power of the purse, particularly when it comes to procurement, said the former assistant chief counsel at the California Air Resources Board, who is now senior vice president at Evergreen Action, an environmental advocacy group. For example, during the Trump administration, California banned the purchase of state vehicles made by companies that backed Mr. Trump's efforts to roll back the state's fuel efficiency rules, including General Motors and Fiat Chrysler, which later became Stellantis. Eventually, those companies reversed course and sided with California. Other leverage is under consideration. State regulators could impose penalties on the use or purchase of vehicles that burn gasoline, while California lawmakers could require that the resulting revenue be used to subsidize the purchase of electric vehicles. Regulators could also limit emissions stemming from vehicles that are linked to enormous facilities like warehouses that are a hub for diesel trucks. Any state can have that. It doesn't need the federal waiver. California influenced the European Union, which is mandating EV-only auto sales after 2035 and truck sales after 2040. The province of Quebec in Canada has linked its carbon dioxide cap and trade market with California's. Quebec used revenues of their cap and trade to pay for incentives and chargers for electric vehicles, which now make up nearly 30% of new car sales in the region compared with 8% in the U.S. Without the carbon market and the linkage with California, we wouldn't be able to achieve this in Quebec, said Quebec's environment minister. And no matter the result of the federal election, California is our partner. 3. Maine How much money has been spent subsidizing heat pumps in Maine? The Portland Press Herald Maine had provided rebates for the installation of 104,000 pumps. Efficiency Maine said it spent about $61 million in incentives for heat pump. 4. New York, New York City Upper West Sider says smoke from wood-fired pizza joint makes life Dickensian. Gothamist. Excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity and relationship to residents against wood smoke emission particulates, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. October 13th, 2024. One neighbor said, the thickness and the oiliness of the soot and the smell that comes out of this chimney is like nothing I've ever experienced. Since 2017, the wood-burning restaurant's next-door neighbors have sent cease and desist letters to the pizzeria's owners, petitioned City Hall, and complained to 311, their local city council member, and to Community Board 7. Some of the apartments are roughly 20 feet away from the wood-burning restaurant's chimney. The New York City restaurant owner said his business is compliant with the emissions rules that went into effect in April. A device reduces particulate matter by up to 97% by cooling down hot, dark smoke, and turning it into water vapor. The restaurant owner said that there has been a scrubber in the Upper West Side chimney since the restaurant opened in 2016, and it's running 24-7. He added that he is in the process of switching to natural gas for his pizzeria. Razep View It seems the following New York City article statistics about pollution are different from Razep statistics because they are about CO2 pollution, not PM2.5 particulate pollution. The article states that burning wood creates two and a half times as much pollution as natural gas and burning coal produces roughly double the emissions of natural gas. Razep assumes these statistics are about CO2 emissions only. Razep view is that wood burning is 90% PM2.5 particulate matter of 2.5 micrometer size, the perfect size to infiltrate the human lungs setting off a cascade of human health problems and early deaths. Wood burning emits 2.8 times the PM2.5 and CO2 as coal burning. Wood burning emits 450 times the PM2.5 as the fossil fuel natural gas burning. These statistics from Razep are based on testing of the cleanest burning indoor residential wood stove in the United Kingdom, the Eco-Design Indoor Residential Wood Burning Stove. Back to the New York City article excerpts. Areas immediately located around wood burning restaurants have higher concentrations of pollutants. The regulations that went into effect last spring are meant to address this localized pollution. Several complaints on the Department of Buildings website regarding smoke from the New York City restaurant named in this article and another restaurant in the building were deemed unfounded by an inspector. Those inspections occurred before the new emissions regulations went into effect. A Department of Environmental Protection spokesperson confirmed an inspector issued a violation in June of the air code to the business, which was attributed to possible failure to maintain the filtration system. Public records show the fine was $1,600. Follow-up inspections in recent weeks found the eatery was in compliance with the rules. But some neighbors are still smelling smoke. Comments from those neighbors include, I have had to replace two sofas and three rugs due to soot contamination, as well as all of my windowsills, and this year I decided I cannot open my windows, except for early mornings the pollution is just too great. Razep view. A commenter agreed with Razep that the emissions were for CO2, not PM2.5. The comment from Tasha 13 hours ago. I'm glad to see this getting coverage. Wood-burning restaurants are horribly polluting and are a serious health hazard, even with scrubbers. I feel so sorry for these neighbors. It should be noted there seems to be some confusion in the article between CO2 emissions and particulate air pollution, which is the actual issue here. The statement burning wood creates two and a half times as much pollution as natural gas. Burning coal produces roughly double the emissions of natural gas, does not refer to air pollution. A regular wood stove in a home emits well over 400 times the amount of particle air pollution as gas. Razep says 450 times. A commercial wood-burning oven like this would emit far more. It would be helpful if the article could be corrected to clarify that. 
Another commenter says, Deb, slash 11 hours ago. Can't they give them air purifiers for their apartments? They work pretty good. Raw's up view is that you should try prevention and not burn wood to begin with. There are clean alternatives for home cooking such as electric stoves in 2024. Seasoning with a variety of spices can make pizza delicious and the black smudges on wood fired pizza could be kitchen floor droppings as easily as they could be wood ash. Wood ash is not inherently delicious, but cravings for eating dirt have been documented. Understanding pica. Children and pregnant women are most likely to have episodes of it. Dirt and chalk are the substances most commonly eaten by people with pica. Some people think pregnant women do this because they're not getting all the nutrients their bodies need. But the cause isn't known. Another comment on this article. 23 hours ago. That's like when other buildings burn the trash. But that's only occasionally. This is all day long. It's terrible. How did it get approved with no expensive scrubber filter system? 5 Pennsylvania. Profiles in clean energy. Once incarcerated expert moves students into climate solution careers. AP News. In a converted warehouse in the poor zip code in Philadelphia students are learning to work on older homes, improve the heating and cooling. 6 United Kingdom. Labor advisor Mark Carney lobbied Reeves for heat pump subsidies to Telegraph. Mr. Harpin said, we want to offer a heat pump rental model over 15 years. The number one hurdle that we've got is persuading the government to change. Labor advisor Mark Carney lobbied Reeves for heat pump subsidies MSN. Former Bank of England Governor Mark Carney lobbied ministers to relax rules on heat pump subsidies to benefit the asset management business. World's first air cleaning tower. 7 China, India, the Netherlands, Poland, and South Korea smog-free towers. Raw view. Just don't burn wood or don't burn solid fuel stubble in farmers' fields to begin with. There are clean alternatives to indoor residential wood burning, using electricity such as heat pumps or electric stoves, for heat or cooking. Razep's choice of best excerpts from the Wikipedia article below. There are air pollution experts who view smog filtration tower projects with skepticism. For example, Professor Alastair Lewis, science director at the NCS, has argued that static air cleaners, like the prototypes in Beijing and Delhi, cannot process enough city air quickly enough to make a meaningful difference to urban pollution. He said that it was, easier, unbalanced opinion, to come up with technologies and schemes that stop harmful emissions at source, rather than to try to capture the resulting pollution once it's free and in the air. Noting that the Delhi Tower would be powered by, mostly, coal-fired electricity, dubious, discuss. Sunil Dahlia from India's Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air has commented that, so we will only be adding to pollution elsewhere in the country. According to the Times, environmentalists said that given the city, Delhi, SIs, and the scale of its pollution, 2.5 million smog towers would be needed to clean its air. As a refutation, the objective is not to clear entire Delhi's air, it is to create special zones where people can breathe, the engineer in charge of the project said. Excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity in relationship to residents against wood smoke emission particulates. A 501c3 nonprofit organization, the world's first smog free tower, was built by a Dutch artist and was unveiled in September 2015 in Rotterdam, and later similar structures toured in Beijing and Tianjin, China, Krakow, Poland, and Anyang, South Korea. The 23 foot tall tower uses patented positive ionization technology and is expected to clean 30,000 cubic meters of air per hour. First generation Salsks, Zian. In 2016, 330 foot tower has been built in Zian, Shangxi, to tackle the city's pollution. It was funded by the provincial government and costs US $2 million. The running cost is $30,000 per year. A 60-meter urban chimney is surrounded by solar collector. This project was led by a chemist at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. I like to tell my students that we don't need to be medical doctors to save lives. If we can just reduce the air pollution in major metropolitan areas by 20%, for example, we can save tens of thousands of lives each year. I hope that people will realize that this is a really effective and cheap way to solve the PM2.5 problem. In the case of India, their population is more packed together, so the towers will be more effective in mitigating PM2.5. At least during the next 10 to 15 years, they can use them to provide relief to residents while they invest in clean energy technology, a regents professor in mechanical engineering at the University of Minnesota, explained. Other towers. India. As of 2022, there are at least eight smog towers in India, some of which are smaller in scale. Connaught Place, around 80 feet. Since August 2021, Anand Vihar, around 80 feet. Lajput Nagar Central Market, 20 feet. Since January 2020, Gandhi Nagar Market, 12 feet. Krishna Nagar Market, 12 feet. Bangalore, 15 more may be installed later. Chandigarh, 24 to 25 m. Water used to remove pollutants. Jaipur. Citation needed. Projects under development. In Delhi, India Kiran Systems is developing a 40-foot tall smog tower called the Kiran City Cleaner. It is different from Don Rusgard's smog tower in that it won't depend on the ionization technique to clean the air. The H14 grade HEPA filter, known for being able to clean up to 99.99% of the particulate matter, will be used instead, together with a pre-filter and activated carbon. It is claimed the tower will filter air for up to 75,000 people within a 3-kilometer, 1.9 miles, radius, and cleaning more than 32 million cubic meters of air every day. Zinera Space proposed Ludian's Delhi Smog Tower Network.